Hello and welcome. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. This is episode 102 of Let's Play the Prince and the Thane mod for Crusader Kings 2. And we are playing as the two-year-old emperor of U the United Kingdom of Great Britain. And so, interestingly, a, a document was found. And um, here, here's what's happened. So, this is, this is true. This is from the history books. I had to do a lot of research for this. I went to the library. So, in the year... 1187 A.D., uh, King Edmund II inherited the entire United Kingdom of Great Britain. Um, what had happened, as historians have discovered, is that uh, his grandfather, Edmund the Enlightened, who is now dead, of course. No, that can't be right. When did he die? Died May 28th. So, huh. Yeah, apparently he died. Seemingly natural causes. I guess that's how he decided to abdicate. Anyway, so what happened was that um, back then, he went insane. Um, his, his murderous rampage across the entire continent um, had, had driven him to madness. No one really recognized it. I mean, no one, no one could see it in his, in his eyes, but, but he was. And so he decided in a fit of rage to take his own life. And when he did, before he did, he wrote a will. And in his will, he, de he decreed that all of his lands should go to his grandson. Now, naturally, his son, Enigmatode, found out about this at the reading of the will, and in an equally abusive fit of rage, ran over and strangled his two-year-old son to death because he could not stand the concept of him losing his father's legacy. So he's going to continue this murderous rampage that his father started, um, by, as we're about to see right now, murdering his own son. Uh, because it's the only logical choice. If you lost an entire empire of, my goodness, how many holdings does this thing have? 787 holdings? Oh, you'd be murderous too. So uh, we're only going to do this once, but uh, yes, so. Oh, that's sad. The two-year-old died. Anyway, all right, so now... Moving on to Dengueto to Byzantium, um, he does have other sons, and uh, fortunately did not get branded as a kinslayer because um, no one else was in the room. He was reading the will to his son. I don't know why. He was just reading it with, in the nursery. Be quiet. Don't ask questions. Just watch the game. <laughs> so, all right, moving on. Okay, so this is how it is. Now we have um, now Dengueto has some brothers, so we've got plenty of plenty of people to to fall back on if anything goes wrong. And we already have another son here as well. We've got Prince Humphrey, who's a twin. Twins are cool. So we need an ambition, first and foremost. Let us, yeah, let's try to increase the size of our domain. That sounds good. Now notice how all of a sudden everything is Byzantium. We can't stand that. that that's not going to happen. And uh, we're currently in voting process. Before I had a chance to do this myself, Enigma told you, ambitiously decided it was time to raise crown law to medium, which is the stupidest thing you could have possibly done after taking over a new empire all by yourself when you're a foreigner and not even the right religion and everyone hates you because you're a short, you have a short reign penalty. Brilliant move. That's a great way to please the vassals, is immediately raise crown law. Um, but anyway, we're going to change our, our primary to Great Britain again so that we get the, uh, you know, the pretty red color that we've been, we've been used to. And I am, at some point soon, going to destroy the empire of Byzantium. And I know some of you in the comments have been saying, I don't think that's a good idea. The United Kingdom of, um, or the empire of Byzantium allows for free, ro free revocation of duchy titles, and yada, yada, yada. But here's the issue. I want to point it out. So there are sub-kingdoms here inside of Byzantium. Actual kingdoms. But these characters beneath me are all dukes. There are no kings. If we look at, say, let's take, um, here, let's take Ep Epirus. I cannot create this. Actually, I can. Never mind. Maybe I'm mistaken. I could have sworn I read somewhere that empires could not create it. Emperors, rather, could not create kingdoms within their empire. Whatever, I'm going to destroy it because I want to. You can't stop me. So there. <laughs> what I want, what I want, here's the thing. I want to be able to have king vassals, and I also want empire drift into 
Uh, let's take a look at it. See how it's flashing? It's got the dashed lines now. Since we hold all of these kingdoms, it's starting to be incorporated de jure into the United Kingdom of Great Britain. It's going to take another 130 years for it to happen, because we have no de jure territory by default. There's a titular title when we created it. But by having it all incorporated into one big, huge kingdom, we're going to have perfect harmony. This is how you create utopia. Um, and the Byzantine Empire is already here, and that's, that's fine. But I don't want the Byzantine Empire. I don't want to start over on this, on this land. It's faster if I incorporate the Byzantine Empire into my empire by killing it. It'll take 150 years from right now. But if I start over and I, I play as the Byzantine Emperor now, um, I would have to count down from the current, uh, current number that's been accumulated on each of these. So it'd, go, it'd take 170 years to have this go and get incorporated into the Byzantine Empire. And finally, furthermore, um, even though we, we would have the ability to revoke duchies, like we can see here, I think, if I... Let's go like this guy. It says... Um, no, I can't do it right now because it's not my primary title. But I'm, I'm still Christian. I'm a, I'm a Catholic. I am not an Orthodox character. So we're not really... I don't know. I'm not going to do it. Just, just stop arguing with me. It's not going to happen. You can't make me. So... What do we want to do? We do have that plot, restore the Roman Empire, if we control all these duchies and things. But we already have an empire. Don't you understand? Okay, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? We don't want to abdicate. We currently do have a war. It's the Byzantine Apulian Excommunication War. It is me versus the Duke of Apulia, who is excommunicated. His primary holding is here. That's an interesting decision, Enigma Toad. So you immediately raise crown law down here, and then the first thing you want to do is go attack somebody who's excommunicated. It's brilliant. It's a brilliant move, I'm telling you. How about we use the, uh, let's use the Jerusalem army. It'll just be easier, I think. We'll take... 5,000 men. And they'll die in boats, but we'll just ship them over here to there. Because I don't really want to worry about rallying all these men all the way over there. That'll take forever. These guys can go to there. Any other rebellions? Oh, there is one there, too. Okay, how about you guys all rally? here. And then we'll use them to clear that up. I hate having these tiny little levees. They're annoying. I'd much rather have a big one. Okay, yeah, sure. Can't join my war. That's fine. Okay, let's check out how Vassal Opinion is doing. Gotta get back into the playing mode. Okay, so we got minus 24 because the guy has religious differences and he is zealous. Okay, that's fine. Let's just see, just we'll do a, yep, there's one. So the Duke of Paristrian, Paristrian wants the Earldom of Nicopolis. I think we can satisfy that request. Currently imprisoned by some other guy. Okay, so what is it that you want again? Earldom of Nicopolis. I'm not even going to bother to check. I know that if he has that desire, that he should have that county. Except that I don't see it. Oh, I must have it myself. No? Do I? Oh, God. All right, fine. Let's do this. You live here. You own. Oh, it's a vassal transfer. What am I doing? I know what I'm doing, I swear. I know how to play this game. What game are we playing? Okay. So you want that Earl. That's understandable. Why? 
Why isn't he yours? This is probably painful for you to watch right now. Control though of the earldom of Nicopolis. He should be in this list. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but what I am going to do is um, I'm going to do a few things. And this is going to be kind of annoying, but this is how you build huge, massive empires. Is um, Let's do this. I want to do a character search. Search the realm for men who are any, who are anywhere, any, any marriage, any ruler, not my... Uh, shoot, I'm going to have to say yes. I wish I could filter it further. Um, and then I don't care about that. Basically, I, I just want everyone from my realm. We're going to sort by opinion. And then I'm going to go down and convert as many people as I can. And I might do some of this off camera. So like orthodox. Look how similar these things are. That's really annoying. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to demand religious conversion of everyone. That is my first move as emperor. Just looking for orthodox people. All of them. Unfortunately, it's not going to do, it's going to be more difficult for me to do culture because I'm going to have to do some revocation of titles and stuff for that. But at least we can get them all to be Christian or Catholic or whatever the hell we are. And I sort it by opinion because basically anyone who has 25 or more opinion should agree. If I could, it'd be great if I could just sort by religion and then, you know, these guys are, are technically not my religion. I mean, they are, but they aren't. Like, they're, they're not Muslim, but they're not Catholic either. But it sorts it by culture group. Culture and religious group, not culture and religious specific. Kind of silly. Do, do, do. So yeah, I mean, if this is boring, then um, it's already been a little while. I think I'm going to end up probably doing this for the rest of this video. So feel free to watch. Um, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep recording it just because up until now I've never played a single day of this game without it being on the camera. So I'm not, you know, you're not missing anything. If you want to watch me do this, this is what I'm doing. But if you're not interested in this religious conversion type part, then uh, feel free to skip to the next video. Can't demand a boy to convert. It's rather unfortunate. That means I'm going to have to do this more than once. Probably two or three times to be safe. Probably now, maybe ten years from now, and then another 20, 20 years from now. And then just periodically, I'm going to have to basically go through and purge the wrong cultures. What the hell is this? Cathar. Unacceptable. Now these characters are going to like me a little bit less for having demanded conversion, but notice there's that religious differences penalty, and if they ever become zealous, then it, it gets multiplied. So it's important that I do this. It also reduces their willingness to plot against me, reduces their willingness to revolt, and join factions. You would not accept. So apparently is it 35? Is that the border? Let's see if we find one more person who's below that. And I could take it a step further. I could, like, bribe the people who are close. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I just want one more person who's a cat. Uh, Orthodox. Where are you, Orthodox man? Must be one more in here. Look at this. It's crazy.
This is downright ridiculous. Look at all these people. Oh, did I see one? Nope. Come on. Alright, I'm tired of this. Hey, you know what? It might be easier at this point to, uh, to sort this way. But, like, I know that if they're at 3, I can't demand the conversion. It's too low. 13, I think, is too low. I could do it. This would probably be a faster way. I must have already asked him. And apparently that's all of them. Well, that explains it. Okay, all right, great. Well, in fairness to the people that didn't watch the rest of this, I am going to wrap this one up here so they don't miss anything. But um, I will play another one soon. So thanks so much for watching. See you in a little bit.